Example number one, choose the best answer for the limit. If the limit f of x as x approaches 7 from the left is 8, and the limit f of x as x approaches 7 from the right equals 4, then the limit as x approaches 7 of f of x does not exist. The reason for that is the limit from the left and the limit from the right must be the same if you're approaching the same value from the left and the right. Example number two. The limit of f of x as x approaches 8 from the left equals 7, and the limit of f of x as x approaches 8 from the right is 7, but f of 8 is negative 7, what can you say about the limit as x approaches 8 of f of x? Well, the limit is going to be 7 because the function value doesn't have to exist. And here's the reason why. If you've got a function that's coming in from the left and coming in from the right and they're going to the exact same point, even if that value is somewhere else, okay, you still have a limit. The main thing is that it's approaching the same value from the left and the right, regardless of what happens when they meet. The function doesn't have to have the same exact value as long as they are approaching. There's one sort of exception to that, and that is if you've got something that looks like this and then like this, where you're going to this point that's sort of on a vertical, okay, it's not going to exist there. Okay, and th there's a reason for that. It has to do with lines going through this point that we'll get to later. But otherwise, as long as from the left, it's going to the same place as from the right, regardless of the function value, you're going to have a, a limit there. Example three. Decide from the graph whether each limit exists. If a limit exists, estimate its value. So part A says the limit as x approaches ne negative 7. Now that's not 7 from the left. That's actually negative 7 of f of x. So we've got to look at the left and the right when they tell us we're going to negative 7. All right. So we're going to get on our number line here our x number line, and we're going to find 7. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7. So we're talking about what's happening here. Now you'll notice is that as we come in from the left, okay, it's going to that point. And as we come in from the right, it's going to the same place. Doesn't matter that there's a hole. That limit right there at negative 7 is going to be negative 2. Because look, the function value there would be, or the y value would be negative 2, regardless if the function is defined at that exact point or not. As long as the limit from the left and right are the same, and that means that you're coming in together from the left and from the right to the same place, regardless of whether that's an open circle or if it is indeed closed. Part B, what is the value of the limit? Select the correct choice below, and if necessary, fill in the answer box with your choice. The limit as x goes to negative 6, that's both from the left and the right, of the function. So I'm going to go back over here to my function, and I'm going to look at x is negative 6 from both the left and the right. So we've got to count again. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let me do that again. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. So we're talking about right here. Okay? So look, we're coming in from the left there. We're coming in the right there. So I go over here, and that's going to be y equals 1 when x is negative 6. So that's going to be x is 1. So at negative 6, the function value is 1 as you come in from the left and you come in from the right. So this limit is positive 1. Number 4, use the graph to find the following limits. 
the limit of f of x as x goes to negative 2, and the limit of f of x as x goes to 0. So let's see. We're going to start by counting. x is negative 2, and so what's happening here, okay, remember, it's okay that the function has a specific different value as long as from the left you're going to the same place as you are from the right. So the limit at negative 2 is 1, 2, 3, positive 3. The y value is positive 3. The limit from the left and the right are the same. Part B, the limit as x goes to 0 of f of x. So that's right here, okay? Because look, x is 0 right here. And look what happens. There's a gap here. This one's going to y is 0. This one's going to y is 1. So here's a case where the limit does not exist. Example 5. Refer to the figure below to find the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x. Mm. So here we go to the right and we continue to ever for, to infinity, which of course we can never reach. So we're going to the right indefinitely. Okay? But what you'll notice is that the function is approaching this value here. So as it gets closer and closer to infinity, it gets closer and closer to what looks to be about 2.25. So this limit is 2.25. So if the tail end of the function is approaching a horizontal line, that value of y is going to be your limit. Example 6. Use a table of values to estimate the limit as x goes to 10 of f of x. Now, we've got to go from the left and right again, and you'll notice right here we're going 9.99999, and here's 10.0001, so look, we're right in here. So if we look at these two values to see if they're the same. And essentially, they are the same. We add another 9 on the end of this and another 0 in here. We're going to get closer and closer to 13. So the limit as x approaches 10 of f of x would be 13. Example number 7. If k of x is x cubed minus 5 12 divided by x minus 8, complete the table and use the results to find the limit as x goes to 8 of k of x. Now, one thing that you could do here is you could reduce this, okay, if you recognize that that's the difference of cubes. So to factor this, I have to recognize that x cubed is x times x times x, and that 512 is 8 times 8 times 8. We can't put an 8 in here because it would make a zero denominator, but notice they didn't ask us to put an 8. They asked us to put something close from the left and something close from the right. So I don't have to reduce it. I can plug the values right there in that fraction right here. But if I recognize that this factors x minus 8, which is one of these and one of these, and x squared plus 8x, that's one of each of these multiplied, plus 64. So here's where the x squared comes from. Here's where the 64 comes from. And this term is always these two numbers multiplied. Now, if this was a plus, if it was x cubed plus 512, it would factor the same way except the signs would be different. Plus would tell us to put a plus in the first binomial and then put the minus in the second position here inside the trinomial. Now, it, since this is over x minus 8, I can wipe that out, and this is a slightly easier expression to evaluate. So you can plug in each of these values in your calculator in either this expression, the original, or this expression, and you'll get the same answers here. But for the sake of time, I'm just going to look at the 7.999 and the 8.001.
So I'm going to, to evaluate f of 7.999 in this new expression, 7.999 squared, 8 times 7.999 plus 64. And I can type it in my calculator just like that. So 7.999 x squared button plus 8 parentheses 7.999 close parentheses plus 64. And this is about 191.97. So you can see that's close to 192. Now as long as this is close to 192, we'll have our limit. So I'm going to do f of 8.001, that's 8.001 squared, plus 8 times 8.001, plus 64. And again, I can just type this straight into my calculator. It's much easier to evaluate than this. If you don't want to factor it or you don't recognize that, here's what you're going to have to do. Put parentheses around this and parentheses around this if you want to just put it in one time. Or you can get the top to four or five places and the bottom to four or five places and then divide at the end. Either one of those is fine. The factoring makes it a lot easier, but again, if you don't recognize the factoring, it is okay to plug as long as you're not plugging in an 8. Look, 8 won't work. That's a zero denominator. So 8.001 squared plus 8 times 8.001, plus 64. And look, that's also 192, because it's 192.02. So coming in from the left and coming in from the right, we're going to the same place. And that is 192. But this is a case where you can't simply plug in an 8, because if you plug in an 8, you get a zero denominator, you get an undefined expression. Example 8, let the limit as x goes to 9 of f of x equal 2, and the limit as x goes to 9 of g of x equal 4. Use the limit rules to find the following limits. The limit as x approaches 9 of f of x divided by g of x. Well, we're just simply going to do arithmetic here. Since we know this limit is 2, and we know this limit is 4, and this is division, we just divide 2 fourths, which is 1 half. It's also 0.5, but notice an integer or a simplified fraction. So they, they want you to reduce this to 1 half. Number 9, let the limit as x goes to 6 of f of x equal 9. Use the limit rules to find the following limit. The limit as x approaches 6 of the square root of f of x. So we know that this is going to be the square root of 9, which is going to be 3. So again, we can just substitute that limit in there and just take the square root of that. And example 10. Let the limit as x approaches 4 of f of x equal 3, and the limit as x approaches 4 of g of x equal 7. Use the limit rules to find the following limit. The limit as x approaches 4 of f of x plus g of x divided by 4 times g of x. And again, since all these limits are to the same place, we simply substitute those values and do the arithmetic. Let's see, 4 times the g of x is 4 times 7. So that's 10 divided by 28. And again, integer or simplified fraction. So I'm going to divide that by 2 and that by 2. So my answer is 5 fourteenths.